Welcome to Ego Netcast. I am Martin Lindeskog. Hi, Chris Benitez. How Hello, are you Martin. doing? How are Very things? Good. Yeah, it's things middle are... of the night in Philippines, right? Yes, it is. It's uh, 12 in the midnight. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah I'm, still, I'm still awake. Thank you. It's all good. Good. And um, yeah, I'm night night owl also often. So great to talk to you here and thanks for uh, uh, taking your time and uh, we will talk about Biz Sugar as a spotlight on you as a member and your thoughts but also your services and how to be a freelancer and your things when it uh, writing services and other things also so you joined uh, in uh, 2012 and you have co- uh, yes. published a couple of stories there and comment and voted and uh, then yes. uh, I have done uh, some interviews before, and then uh, Phil from India, he he said uh, that he wanted to hear about you and your business and your your experience with Peace Sugar. So then I reached out to you, and you were quick to reply. And I understand you have been pretty busy with clients and so on. But now we found uh, a time here. So yeah. and since you you and I joined. Several years ago, they have now created also Beast Sugar Mastermind that Gail is a gardener is uh, working hard with. And I, I did uh, Ask Me Anything session about podcasting some time ago. So mm-hmm. it's a great place to, to know. And I wonder if you have any thoughts or questions or ideas about Beast Sugar sharing function. And also be sugar mastermind, and we will take some examples of your post that you have done, and have some discussion about that. But any introduction there? What do you, what do you think about uh, this online community? Yeah. So first of all, I joined this sugar in 2012 because I believe yeah. that it's one of the best places to promote your blog posts or articles, and at the same mm-hmm. time, you get to learn from other people's posts, get to know them, not just people online but also personally through the things that they write so uh in my experience with with this sugar has been really great through the years and i'm still a Mm -hmm. part of it after eight years or so and Mm -hmm. i've I've never really regretted joining it it's one of the best at at one point in my writing career it's one of the best sources of traffic for the sites that i've handled over the years as well and with the this sugar mastermind leveling up to that to that uh, playing field, I think it's a great way to also expand on the idea of connecting like-minded people, bloggers, business owners, whatever, and having their own space online to talk about what they want to learn from other people. You know, at the same time, it's a better way to connect with other people who has the same who have the same passions and interests. So good, good on you. Yeah, great. And I'm reading then from uh, your profile there because you can then become friends with other users also and that at that time you wrote that you were content marketed on your the Biz sugar profile and from your website i see that you uh, say that you're freelance writing services and then i you had an interesting page there called tools you use and it was a great list there of different tools could you tell a bit about these tools and what the services that you are uh, doing and uh, providing to your clients? Well, uh, first off, as a freelance writer, you have to mm-hmm. offer content that not only people will like, but from a technical standpoint, it has to be well written. It has, should have no errors whatsoever. So it has to fit to a T with what the client yep. wants. And the tools that I've listed on my site, the page that I wrote there, pretty much helps me get all these going so that I can uh, produce content that clients would like, but also at the same time, uh, their audience would like, that Google will like, so that they will rank higher on on uh, organic search. So with regard to the tools that I use, uh, some of the, the ones that I listed were uh, SearchStat. It's an SEO tool. Uh, it's a content marketing tool as well to help me research for keywords, topics, and to also uh, um, conduct competitor analysis and research to help me understand who I'm who am I up against, who is my mm-hmm. client up against, and then I create content that's similar to them and 
make it even better. So it's one of those tools. Also, uh, I use Pro Writing Aid. It's like Grammarly, which I also use, but with Pro Writing Aid, uh, I feel it's much more flexible because I use it on on Microsoft Word and I write my articles there sometimes and also from GDocs. I can I feel it's much more flexible to use and it's easier to use. it helps me spot the errors that some of the other tools that I've used for the years can't. So yeah that's one of my favorite tools that I'm using right now. And another tool that I listed there is Social Animal. So unlike Surfstat, which does SEO in content marketing, uh, Social Animal helps me analyze the different content that is popular on social media. So it helps bridge the gap between SEO and social media so that I can come up with topics for clients, proposals to write for them with uh, articles that people or their audience would love. So I, I, I know I listed other tools, but those three tools right now that are they, I, I use them most of the time, and it's led me to where I am right now. Yeah, great great to hear, and thanks for uh, uh, the explanation, and also you give me uh, some inspiration there for my last site, as I call it, tparty.media, but I will list my services as a new media advisor, but also resources that I'm using, like the one that we are using right now, Ringer, a long-distance recording yeah. tool. Uh, and now we'll mix it up a bit. You had another page there called About Yourself. And uh, yeah. I have to ask, as an old synth pop fan, and I did an interview oh. with James Knights on my site, but you are into <laughs> heavy metal. So what's oh, yeah. N-W-O-B-H-M? I don't know what okay. that's it. <laughs> so just a quick background. Uh, well, I was an angry kid back then. Hmm. Back in the nineties, so it was a time where boy bands were around. So I just got tired yeah. of it, and I just started listening to this type of music. So NWO BHM means New Wave of British Heavy Metal. So uh, uh -huh. these are metal bands from Britain. Uh, hmm. The more popular ones are Iron Maiden, Judas yeah. Priest. Uh, yeah. You're familiar with them, so uh, to explain them, I am uh, they're heavy metal in the sense that they're technically proficient and they use instruments to convey the emotions in a very powerful way. So it's kind mm. of heavy in the sense that the instrumentations are loud, but at the same time, there's also substance in there. Uh, they, they, they weave stories. So basically, that's what attracted me most to the type of music because it's not just the usual things that you hear. It's, it brings you to a different space and mindset mm. that wouldn't really see around you, so it's, it kind of is uh, allows me to escape with their music. So that's what really attracted me to that to heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to hear, and it's a bit funny. I mean, I know about Iron Maiden also, for example. Um, so, and I think James Knights when he had a, a Facebook Live a session for um, some some work you now in these hard times. Um, mm -hmm. he, he then uh, you could ask questions to him and then he asked if he had met other musicians and have talked to them and, and so on jammed with them and he, he mentioned I think it was the singer of Iron Maiden or somebody else in this hard, more hard heavy metal band and he had a great experience and exchange there so it's, it's fun uh, and then right. you have to talk about yeah continue no um, I just wanted to know what other uh, musicians you listen to under synth pop because I'm not really familiar with that. I just want to know. No. Yeah, uh, so I, I think uh, I like it. I've been listening to, some, for example, one Canadian band called Rational Youth uh, that played okay. uh, synth pop. Many of these bands have started them and they are now along because in the 80s it was popular with these, but some have been around for a long time. And with James Knights, I found him. And this is in in your area, you could say, through Apple Music's search algorithm. So they suggested me to listen to to this band, and I didn't know about it. And then uh, we hooked up and we became friends on on Facebook. And then uh, I had an interview with him because it was a interesting uh, thing that have happened with one of the bands he is involved in, Voitronic. They. Uh, uh, um, 
clothing brand in, in Germany had picked one of her songs. So he thought it could be good to, to talk about that, but also other things. So we then uh, scheduled an uh, interview and uh, recorded it. So And I had a nice uh, talk to him when they were visiting Gothenburg, Sweden, and had a concert. Yeah. And also his uh, band member there, uh, Nina, was there also. So that was a nice set. So, and you have an, also an interest in hamburgers. Uh, craft yeah. burgers that sounds yummy do you could you could you yeah. find uh, real hamburgers in uh, in your area in philippines yeah we, we we do have it's not of course uh mcdonald's they're burgers but they're not uh mm. craft burgers quote unquote, because they're uh craft burgers they're really made with care they they use real ingredients yep. real organic food whatsoever so that Mm. It tastes much better than the usual mm. burger that you're accustomed to. And we do have a couple here, but it's it's probably not as, as many as around in the Western countries. But uh, we yeah. do have certain cat burgers. And obviously, I as much as possible, I try to get a bite every once in a while. It's like a comfort yeah. food, basically. That's good because you have, of course, an influence in Philippines from from uh, United States of America. So that's, yeah, that's great to to hear. And yeah, and uh, we'll talk more more about that. And here, in as I said, in Europe and Western countries, these craft burgers have been um, pretty popular lately. So that I I like it. Uh, and then at the end here about your about page, and again I like that your your personal because that's how you do business, like. Dr. Ivan Meisner, uh, the founder of BNI, the Business Network International, he said, you have this process, also that John Jansch have talked about that in his referred engine uh, book. Mm -hmm. It's that you know somebody first, as we are doing now, and like each other, and then you trust them, and then you uh, do business and then refer them to others. So yeah, uh, I totally it's, agree it's great to oh, get yeah. a, a glimpse of you, uh, Chris, a bit more. So you have to t explain about wrestling because you say you still believe in it. And I, I remember from my time in America, uh, in the studies and so on, I saw this uh, show uh, and t theater, you could say. And uh, and I remember it was a Stone Cold Austin, for example, yeah, yeah. and Hulk That's Hogan. But mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and also this, uh, what, what was the family that run one of these leagues? Uh, some oh, uh, Irish, uh, yeah, okay, it and it was known. all, yeah, yeah. So, could you tell about your fascination about this so called sport? <laughs> well, with regard to what you said, I, I feel real about it because I know people yeah. say that it's fake, it's scripted. We all yeah. know that, just yeah. as we know that movies, yeah. series that we watch on TV, they're all. And quote unquote fake as well. But with wrestling, um, yeah. I guess it carried from my childhood because I look up to these guys, they're like superheroes basically, uh, in spandex yeah. or in trunks or whatever they're wearing. So basically, that's again, just like music, it's just my escape to to, cert, uh, to a different reality, a different, different world where you leave what you have right now and just look at the wrestling and how they persevere the matches and everything and how it's laid out. So basically what you just also said about being like theater is true because it's pretty much live on the air and people react to the crowd reactions, the wrestlers mm. interact with people. So basically it's a very interactive experience and it also adds to the fascination that I have with that. It's, it's a re If you think about it, it's really difficult what they do. They put their bodies on the line and they entertain and it's really not... It's, for me, it's it's uh, easy to respect them and to appreciate what they do, and that's pretty much mm -hmm. what what I like the most about this. It's that they're able yeah. to do the things that they do. They communicate through their bodies, and their language, through the crowd in real time, and obviously the matches also. That's that's interesting. Have you have you uh, written any blog post about that? <laughs> I've written before, but uh, I think uh, it, mm. it got lost. So. I also tried launching a website about professional wrestling, but it's really hard because uh, I, I don't live in, in the States to be no. connected. Yeah, so yeah. I just right now I just enjoy watching it. 
that's all that I can do right now. That's good for you, yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the posts here that you have uh, written and posted. And one thing uh, was there, uh, get paid to write articles, 150 websites uh, yeah. pay uh, for writing. And uh, I asked the question there, how long time did it take to complete this list? And you said it took a month to collect the information and uh, write description for each. And yeah. glad you enjoyed it. So, uh, uh, and that's a huge job. There uh, has since you wrote it. Has uh, have you uh, have you been thinking of updating it, or have uh, anything else uh, that you on your mind regarding uh, sites and magazines where you could uh, write and get paid for? Yeah, uh, it's interesting that you said it because I was planning to update it uh, within the year with the new sites and probably remove some of the old ones and. Why mm. I wrote this one as a freelancer because I know the feeling of uh, struggling writers trying to find jobs because I was there at one point in my life as well because I started out with nothing. I tried to build myself up. Mm. It is through writing for these sites and some other sites that allowed me the opportunity to become the freelance writer that I am. And by writing this post, it's like I want to also reach out to other writers that you can do this. You just have to find the right places to write that will pay you money. And I provided, I think I provided them this at the very least. Well, that's good. And uh, talking that, uh, that you said you started from, yeah, as we all do from zero and now yeah. developed, uh, you wrote a uh, post there also about have realistic goals when it comes to blogging. And I've been blogging since 2002 and, and then started with podcasting 2006. Uh, and it's interesting to see how it developed and, and also that to be realistic. Yeah. So do you have any other f thoughts on, about that or something that you want to share to newbie bloggers or um, people with experience or yeah, something about blogging? Because I, for me, it's blogging will still be around. Uh, I see it's, it's one of the important content creation areas. Yeah, with, with regard to blogging and setting realistic I think people know now nowadays that blogging is not like a, you won't uh, reach success overnight with blogging because uh, I think at one point uh, people think that making money online is easy and obviously blogging is one of those ways that you can earn but you have to wait months or years to get it right and to eventually earn money from it. So by setting yourself with the expectation of being patient and ha having to persevere all the years and months of building up your blog, I think that's really the, the key to success. You have to wait. You have to do things right first. And even if you're a newbie or you're an experienced blogger, uh, you should know this if you are experienced. But you should have, mm. you should wait. You should, you, sh you should do things right and you don't take shortcuts and you just have mm. to wait. It, your time will come. You just have to do it you have to establish brick by brick, basically. Yeah, and it's it's good that you say that because I have done it since 2002 and I, I like to do it. I want to ventilate about things in what's going on in the world. But then also I, I created re relationships, uh, for example, with Anita Campbell of Small Business Trends. We, right, exactly. we yes. read each other's blogs. Uh, and now... Uh, this years later, I am starting now a course with somebody that I invited to another kind of online community called Fizzle. Mm -hmm. And they have a course there called Start a Blog That Matters. And then, as you said, to have realistic goals, but also to know why, what, why you're entering the blogosphere, to, to have like a foundation. Uh, because you could, as you said, you could see lots of blog posts about quick fix uh, to to earn lots of money in a short time, yeah. uh, all kind of e even you know black hats SEO and yeah, yeah. Uh, some also scams out there also that I have seen and that's that's pity. But then you see the good guys that are doing it in in a, in, a, in a rational way and uh, doing a good value like people on Busby Sugar and Small Business Trends mm -hmm. and others. Exactly. And then it's. Uh, you you get confident that you could uh, continue with this because as I said my speciality is podcasting as we are doing now 
But I, I see that the blogging will still be around and it's an important uh, way of content creation. Uh, so, but you have to reflect on it sometimes because the blogging landscape have changed since I started and what it is now. So, um, yeah. yeah Do you have any uh, thoughts, thoughts about that? Yeah. It's changed a lot because back then blogging was kind of new, I guess. So it's not mm. as saturated as as today, where millions of bloggers, mm. millions of blogs launch, I guess, every day, or millions of blog posts. Mm. So you have to be, you have to set a strategy. So going back to patience, mm. you just you can't just write whatever's on your mind and expect to drive lots of traffic. Mm. You have to plan. You have to be really, again be realistic. You have to do research, you have to write it well, and you have to publish it and then share it. So basically, there's a process that you have to follow every time you publish a post. So it, it, you can't just write and write and write and then expect people to come. You have to also, as a blogger, it's, you're just not a writer, you're a business owner, basically. You promote mm. the post, you connect with other people, and at I guess if you, you grow your blog, you can also invite other writers. You can pay them so to further grow your your blogging empire. So that's I guess that's the trend now. You have to really approach it from a business standpoint, and not just you're a writer and you, you're just happy writing. Yeah, right. Uh, do do you do you help uh, bloggers with your uh, freelancing services and writing services also? Well, at the moment, I'm more focused on helping clients. Uh, rank their websites. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Eventually, uh, I, I, I do plan on giving back to the community, to the blogging community and the freelance writers, most especially because they deserve a life that I... I well, I'm not saying that I... I I'm lucky, basically. Uh, I've made a career mm-hmm. out of writing for different websites. Some of them are authoritative. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty blessed. And I want to also share the blessing by imparting my knowledge eventually, but uh, that, that's mm. still on the watch. Mm. Good for you, Chris. And uh, here you did a, a comment there on a on a post regarding landing pages. Uh. Uh, do you have any uh, tips or tricks there regarding landing pages? If you want to create something uh, like a start for maybe your planning a product or service or a book or, or something else but it's not ready yet or you have like a micro site that you want to, to have one page that people will land on without doing uh, making it how to say sleazy because i have seen lots of you know landing page where and when you get uh, trapped almost yeah that's true. <laughs> it's hard to get out <laughs> to joke yeah yeah so just on the top of my head landing pages basically uh you have to have a purpose. You have a specific goal with your landing page. And it has to be a goal. Just one goal, which is basically if you're selling products, you're selling a course, you want to build your email list. So you have to zero in on that specific goal and build your entire page into converting visitors to to that goal of yours. And to do that, uh, you have to tell a story. So it's all about stories. As writers... Uh, this is pretty important because as a reader, the only way that you can convert them is to be able to connect with them through the words that you write. And by telling a story, like for example, um, I was reading from uh, Raylan Tan. She's also a blogger. and I've been uh, reading uh, her blog post and some of her landing pages. And one of the things that I saw there is that she shared her experience as a blogger, starting out from nothing, and then she's able to create courses that converted people or help people with their own blogs. And that pretty much uh, what is really a uh, landing page is all about is being able to to share something to people that resonates with them that would in turn get those people to be on board with what you're saying and that eventually they will convert into whatever you want them to do. So just to keep things simple, it's just all about building a story, saying the things that people want to hear, and then being uh, and, and redirecting all your energies into that single goal that you want uh, visitors to do on your landing page. Hmm. That's great. Great, Chris. Thanks for that uh, tip. And uh, 
at, at the end here, do you have any things that you want to share? And of course, you have to tell where the listeners could find you on, on uh, this interwebs in cyberspace. Uh, so I guess what I just want to share being my, this is my first podcast interview. And I thank you for that, um, Martin. It's, it's been an honor and I could, couldn't have thought of any other person to, to do this with. And yeah, just again, as Thanks. a freelance writer, I guess, and being in the interwebs, it's it's really a, a wild ride, basically. Uh, I never really expected to get to this point. I was just uh, at one point working a 95 job. I felt trapped in it, and I never really imagined to to be doing this kind of uh, line of work where you just wake up, you do the things that you had to do, and it's just it's just uh. It's part of your life in the sense that it doesn't really bother you as much as working on a nine-to-five job. It's just who you are. Mm. It becomes who part of who you are, and I'm pretty much lucky to to have been uh, doing this as uh, for as long as I can remember. I think it's seven years and counting. So I guess mm. I, what what I'm trying to say is that if I can do it, I I guess with with perseverance with enough luck. Everybody can do this too. So, uh, what what you mentioned a while ago about being able to share this with other bloggers, I I'm trying to get to that, and I I really do want to share my story as well, so that people will be able to do better than what I'm doing right now. And and people would 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 reach me at uh, ChristopherJohnB.com, C H R I S T O P. H E R J A N B dot com. So that's kind of long. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, my Twitter yeah. is also Christopher John B. You can also visit my page on um, Facebook, Christopher John B. And yeah, um, pretty much it. Pretty much that's it. Yeah. Great. And you're on LinkedIn also? Yeah, yeah. LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. Same. Uh, Christopher John B. Pinterest, Christopher John B. Uh, you can message me anytime on those channels. You can message me on Twitter as well. So I'll try to try my best to to, to reply. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Chris, and um, talk to you soon again. Thank you, Martin. Thanks. Thank you. Bye for now. Right. Thank you, Martin. Mm-hmm.